afternoon, everyone. Uh, I appreciate that all of you showed up today. Uh, today's topic will be on understanding New York City's budget. A uh, brief overview. Okay, let us consider. Now, how many of us have taken the time to actually think about how we receive the myriad of services that we benefit from living in this city? And the reason I actually wanted to present this topic was because, to me, it was of great interest because I'm working toward a degree uh, as a MSW. Well, of course, there are steps I have to take, and possibly also uh, public service as well. And so I thought it would be of great interest to share with you all you know, how we actually get our services. And uh, we, we do take them for granted, though. I'm going to see if I can uh, give you a, put a face on the services. What will we learn? Basically, what we'll learn is where our funding comes from. Because unfortunately, everything for this city, how it is run, how we get our services, it's about money. So what we're going to learn about is where the various parts of the money comes from, and then where it goes to benefit you, uh, the New York City resident, while you live here. Okay, where the money comes from. Now what I want you to do briefly is check out the pie chart that you have in front of you. Okay? Um, now you can see on the top it's telling us where the money comes from. And as you'll see, we do get funding from the state and we get some from the federal government as well. Uh, actually, I also found out in my research that we actually give the federal government and give the state of New York, our city, a lot more than we get back. But that's for another topic. Okay. Now, if you'll see, uh, a good portion of it comes from property tax. Uh, personal income tax is pretty much a good, rep well represented. Now, sales tax, as you can see, is 9%. By the way, these figures are from 2001. Um, I don't have the latest figures like 2007, so this is just a representation. Okay, so most of our funding is actually from taxes, as you'll see. And now, um, okay, show me the money. Okay, now we're moving down to where does the money go, and you'll see that services consume about three-fourths of our budget. Uh, and look at it. Look at education. That should mean something to us, especially those of us who have small children in school, those of us who are planning to go on to another college, a senior college, and uh, also even further. Uh, you will be interested about the education budget, if you're not yet. Um, also, social services. Now look at social services. That's 22%. Of course, these figures are from 2001. And so we actually do give a lot in social services because we're, we have a lot of people here, uh, people in all kinds of situations. So um, we're not going to, because time doesn't allow, we won't get into the various types of social services. I think we're all familiar with that, though. Um, then we have, as you can see, fire, police, and corrections. I mean, you know, you can't get around the fact that you're going to need to have someone out there keeping some order, keeping some safety. Then those folks who do get apprehended by the police for whatever, they've got to go somewhere. So corrections, you know, is definitely something that's needed. And of course, you do want someone that's going to bust down the doors of your apartment or your house if there's a fire and come in there and try to save you. So these are essential services. We can't get around that. Okay, and then we also have transportation and housing. Now it's a shame now that we only have like between the two combined, 2% two towards housing. That's a shame. You know, anybody here going into uh, some areas in the future, uh, you know, you need to see if we can get together and collectively do something about it. We need to increase the money that goes to housing because the situation here isn't good for housing. Okay, now health, sanitation, and environmental protection. 
Well, you know, I guess they're doing a pretty good job. I mean, for a big city that we have, they're doing a pretty good job taking care of that because I don't hear anybody complaining about our sanitation. I don't hear those kind of complaints. So we're doing good with that amount of money. And look at how much is for recreation and culture. Only 1%. However, you know, if you think about it, between what the city does and because we're New York City, and we have this wide range of cultural things, museums. We have so many things going on, so, which are, those are private, and maybe there's uh, partnerships. So we don't have a problem as far as recreation and culture at a certain level. However, for people who can't afford to go to those things, we still need to do better in them. So that 1% affects them a lot, and I'm included in that. OK, now, where you see general government, debt service, pension and fringe benefits, that is the money that goes to the administrative costs of running the city. So general government is are the employees and what it costs to pay them and things like that. Debt service is related to, well, we, uh, we owe money because we take on projects and we have to pay on them. So that's what debt service is. And of course, the pension and fringe benefits, you know, people want to work for the city. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, your money at work. Well, on your second handout, you can take a look and see what, for example, $10 million buys you in services. Now, that isn't so bad. I mean, of course, I guess we need to have something to compare it to to know whether it's good, bad, or not. But I mean, it still gives you an idea uh, of how your money is being spent, and if you were to take a slice out, a chunk, and see what $10 million can buy. Okay, putting it in perspective, how we stack up with other cities. Well, you know, our actual budget this year is 59, coming out in the fiscal year of the summer, is $59 billion. Now, that's a lot of money. Uh, put it in perspective, our city, our budget is larger than every state except for a handful of states. So there are states that our city, and quite a bit of them, there's only a few, like a handful, that have, as a state, budget larger than ours. Um, now, to give you another idea, I have here, and if anyone wants to look at it later on, I have here a list, this is from the CIA, Gross Domestic Product of Countries. And 148 countries in the world have a gross domestic product less than what our city's budget is. This is 148 cities. Just to give you a little bit of perspective on um, how much money that is. Um, so I ask you the question, it's be is it better to have and don't need and need and don't have? And the reason I ask that question is, you know, we have so many services that I believe most people don't even use and aren't aware of them. I think if you were challenged, if someone had a list of all the services, you'd be surprised how many there are. And if we asked how many do you actually use, you probably uh, come to the conclusion you use very few. But when we leave this city and go somewhere else, if you've been other places in the country, you'll find out just how much we have in services compared to other cities. The power of attraction. Did you know that there are people who come to our city because they heard about what New York offers? There are actually people coming to our, there are people who come to our city because they don't have, or either they don't have somewhere to live or they don't like their living conditions and they actually come to New York to try to get New York City to house them, believe it or not. But it's not just that, we actually attract people from all parts of the country to New York because of all the combined things that we have and from outside the country as well. And that's why if you look around our city, we are a mosaic because so many people want to live in our city because we actually give a lot. In fact, that is why um, it's cost so much to live in Manhattan because people who do have the means come to Manhattan because they have the means and they drive up the prices of, of cost of living and so they're the ones who uh, cause it to be a problem in terms of uh, being able to get housing and being able to afford it.
But again, it's if you can pay the price, then uh, that's the kind of market we have. Okay, so now I can say that I know the basics. You know, you, you've gotten a brief rundown of uh, how our money comes, where it goes, and actually I'm hoping that through this experience you actually will leave here knowing a little bit more than you did today and maybe the seeds that were planted in you will make you become empowered to become involved in the processes of the city because by the way you can actually take part in how these budgets are formed. Okay, I want to thank you all for your time and your attention.